Hello everybody, it's Foster and I am back with another video. Um, I'm going to be reading Places We've Never Been by Cassie West, chapter 30, I believe. Let me open the actual book. Um, yeah, chapter 30. And I'm just going to get right into it because I have nothing to say. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Chapter 30. I didn't even care about the gross tile floor or the walls in the public bathroom where I sat, fully dressed, door locked. I meant to take a shower. I had planned on ta I meant to take the shower I had planned on taking before, but I just sat there, steam filling the room. Olivia was sick. My chest wrote my chest had been on fire since I heard the news and it still was. I thought I was worried before, but now I was overwhelmed with worry. Was she really going to be okay? Like they both assured me people beat cancer all the time. Stage 2 was good news, at least I hoped. But how could I keep this from Skylar? Unexpected question number 100, Nora, I mumbled. Would you say that when making out with someone, you should have the decency to be completely honest with him, or do not believe in morals at all? I squeezed my eyes shut. It's not your secret to tell. It's not your secret to tell. I shut off the shower, picked up my phone, and dialed Willow. Hello? She answered after the first three rings, her voice sleepy. Sorry, I forgot it was so late, I said, my voice betraying my emotion. Tears filled my eyes and I sniffled. I, I found out I couldn't finish the sentence. Oh no, she said. He told you? I'm going to kill him! What? I asked. I wanted to be the one to tell you, in person, after your interview. I blinked slowly, trying to comprehend what she was telling me. Do you hate me? Please don't hate me. You're my best friend and I didn't mean to fall for him, it just happened. And just like that, it hit me, like a slap across the face. Ezra talking to someone on the phone, telling them he wouldn't tell me. Ezra reading a note I thought was mine, but was obviously his. Ezra texting in the bathroom. The message preview I saw on his home screen. Ezra didn't know about Olivia's secret. He had his own. You and my brother, I whispered. For how long? I don't know. That wasn't true. And that meant this wasn't brand new. They had been keeping it from me for a while. Is this why you wanted to be my friend? How come it had never occurred to me before? Everyone knew and loved my brother. He was confident and funny and high school royalty. I thought Willow had been immune to his charms. Seriously? She asked, anger in her voice. I pulled my phone away from my ear and jammed my finger against the red circle as hard as I could. Then I pushed the heels of my hands against my eyes. This was too much this was too much to process all at once. Olivia and Willow and Ezra. My hands were shaking. I stood up on wobbly legs and turned the shower back on. Then I peeled off my clothes and stood under the stream until water, the water ran cold. I draw, dried off and pulled my pajamas over my still slightly damp skin. I gathered up all my things and opened the door. A strangled scream escaped my mouth when someone was standing right outside waiting for me. Ezra put a finger to his lips. I shoved past him, realizing what this meant. Willow had called him, because he was someone she called now. She had told him everything, told him to fix it. He couldn't fix it. Leave me alone. We were going to tell you, he said. Ezra, if you keep talking to me, I swear I will be punched, forced to punch you. Nora, hear me out, please. No, I just want to sleep. I'm sorry you had to find out this way, but I'm not sorry about my feelings for Willow. I whirled, I whirled on him, poking my finger into his chest. She's all I have back home, Ezra. You could have had anybody. I only have her. One person shouldn't be your everything, Nora. Didn't you learn that when Skylar left? Branch, branch out. Find more friends. That's what normal people do. I bit down hard on the inside of my cheek to keep from crying again and rushed ahead. The wind chimes were going strong as I reached our campsite. They felt like the soundtrack to a horror movie now. I wasn't sure I could be a wind chime girl after this. I had not slept well. Not that I was surprised. It was morning now, and the sun was shining around the edge of the, bl of the blinds, making them glow like a portal to another world. I wondered if everything was screwed up in that world, too. My phone was full of text messages from Willow. I ignored them and reached over to the windowsill, but instead of grabbing my flashcards, I picked up the notebook. notebook. We'd left off on a Skylar entry. I ran my finger over his handwriting and then read, Right now, it feels like life is happening, just happening to us, outside of our control. One day, we'll get to pick everything about our lives, where we want to live, who we want to spend our time with, who we don't. I'll choose you, Nora. I closed the book and pushed it to the side again. I remembered reading that entry the first time. It was before I knew the Huttons were moving, and I was so confused. 
I pulled, confused, I pulled on my shoes and ran to Skylar's house. He wasn't home, though. Where is he? I asked his mom. I knew his schedule like my own, and he should have been home. He went for a walk. I checked all the normal places, the orchard, the neighborhood park, the elementary school courtyard. He wasn't in any of them. Finally, I found him in his own backyard, in his sister's playhouse. <clears throat> hey, dork, I said, peeking my head through the small window. I've been looking everywhere for you. I was walking. That's what your mom said, but you don't look like you're walking. You look like you're sitting in a very small playhouse. I stuck my arm through the window, trying to reach him. He laughed and scooted to the back corner. Fine, I guess I'm coming in. We hadn't sat in the playlist in playhouse in at least a year, and when I opened the door, I knew it would be a tight squeeze. Don't come in, we won't both fit. Is that a challenge? Why do you think everything is a game? Because I like games. He rolled his eyes. I climbed in. Look at that. I win. Win what? The reward of feeling claustrophobic? Am I too close? I inched even closer to him. Do you hate this? No. What's wrong? I asked, noticing that he wasn't playing along with my teasing. Does this have to do with that confusing notebook entry you wrote? Skylar's knees were up against his chest, his eyes shining with held back tears. Mom said we're moving. Your parents want a bigger house or something? No, we're moving far away. What? My body went numb. No, you can't. I don't want to. Tears ran freely down his cheeks now. He reached out and grabbed my hand. It's okay. I pulled my hand oh, I pulled my hand away. You're okay with this? No, I'm not. I'm scared. Of what? Of being alone, of not making any friends, of he ran his finger over the faded bee on my bracelet. Of never seeing you again. He ha hastily wiped at his tears. He was right. Everything had fell out of our control back then, and I was feeling it again. That sense that something, sometimes, no matter how well we planned or how hard we worked, or our very best intentions, life wasn't up to us. The door opened and Mom's voice said, You up yet, Nora? Food is ready. I'm up. I'll be right there. <clears throat> when I walked outside after brushing my teeth and hair, everyone was already at the table eating. Ezra gave me a pleading look that made the fire flare up in my chest again, but then my eyes found Skylar. He smiled at me. I round, rounded the table and stopped behind him. I put one arm around his neck, hugging him from behind, my cheek against his. He laughed through a mouthful of pancakes and patted my arm. Good morning. Are you handing out hugs? My mom said, probably because she thought I was going to give away their secret if I acted like this. But she didn't need to worry. I had so many secrets at this moment that everyone would already... I had so many secrets at the moment that everyone would only be thinking about their own. I'll take one, Austin said, and I obliged. <clears throat> I straightened up and took my place by my mom, across from Skylar. So, which tourist attraction gets our business first, I asked, pretending like this was all completely normal. My mom hadn't explained her odd behavior on the whole trip, and I didn't feel the need to explain mine. And that is the end of chapter 30. Um, I hope you all enjoyed, and guess what? We get even more na answers now. Now we know what Ezra's secret is. Um, yeah, I hope that you all enjoyed, and thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!